I look rampant? Welcome to Mirror Domains Movie News, your place for entertainment headlines. And indeed, this is a live show for movie fans where we're going to talk about all the trending movie news headlines of the day, including what's going on with Jurassic World 4 reboot, uh, and some new casting, maybe Uncharted 2. Uh, Mark Wahlberg talks about uh, yeah, what's going on with that. Ready or not to? Rebel Moon 2 comes out this week. Did it? Anybody actually remember that? <laughs> not me. Hey, hey, I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, Keanu Reeves joins Sonic 3. Yeah, we knew that from yesterday. But we start off today's show by talking about the headline, Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi 2. Is it happening? From everything that I've been told, it's, it's, it's probably not. But Simu Liu, star Shang-Chi himself, promises a sequel is still coming. Probably just not right away, and probably not for another three or four years as well, <laughs> I understand. Oi, <laughs> okay, so let's get into this. Uh, lots of trades are going to be running with this. Uh, Simu Liu, I, guys, I was rather harsh on aspects of the Chong Chi movie. Chong Chi? Chong Chi James? You just heard me wrong. It was, it was a problem with the microphone. <laughs> Uh, 91% by critics, 98 by the audience. So people who went on the side liked it. For me, guys, I liked the setup. I loved everything about the setup, the father-son uh, connection there. But then it just turned into a big kind of CGI cartoon at the end, which just really took me out of it because I would have preferred to have it a little bit more grounded in realism and not uh, people flying around on CG green screen stages. Oy. And it was nominated for Best Visual Effects. I don't know what you were smoking. Um, yeah, I, I, just, I just don't get it. Like, there was just no tangibility to the ending of the movie. Like, yeah, the mad painting there looks okay. But for me, yeah, uh, once, it, when it, once it turned into uh, the third act, I, I was checked out. Um, I was like, guys, guys, what are you doing? Stop this. Uh, we've got a more dramatic angle here that we can really capitalize on with the father and son duel. But the question remains, and I put it to you guys out there, the MCU fans, what is, how does Shang-Chi fit into the MCU? Do we know? Have they said no? At the end, it looked like he was going to go off with Wong and then be part of something. But we haven't seen him since. So it's kind of like, what's happening? What is happening? Uh, Simu Liu says that it's still happening, but I got my doubts. We've known that there's been a regime change there at uh, Marvel, at least above Feige's level. Uh, and the new mandates come in with more quality over quantity. And they were just churning out all these things. I, I guys, if you were a big fan of Shang-Chi, then I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but he's not top tier. He's not a top tier hero. Uh, he's powerful for sure, but he belongs as the sidekick, the the guy that comes in and helps the Thor or something like that. And that's the best way that I see that he could be utilized. Having a second movie is you're throwing your money away. If you can make a Shang-Chi 2 for $50 million, then I would say go for it. Do it. But you can't. And you won't. So I say don't. Because you're... It's just, it's just not going to be there. People have kind of... Cast, like, they don't know what to do. Right? They don't know how to feel about this stuff. Uh, like, even me saying these statements now, it seems like I'm fairly, you know... Uh, stuck in my opinion about it but if they come out and announce a plan for Shang-Chi 2 and how it's going to tie into everything then I could get back on board I, yeah, I can change my mind with it so uh, somebody said here I feel like Marvel has abandoned the Shang-Chi fan base there has been no effort by the studio to get the sequel filming or even include the character in the other Marvel films yeah because it used to be a like you these characters would show up in post credit scenes from other movies, but it's been like so all over the place since phase four. And despite what 
the diehards out there and Kevin Feige say like, don't worry, it'll all make sense once once Phase Five comes out. Well, we're in the midst of Phase Five and we still have no idea what the heck's going on. Who are the Avengers? Should we like, ah, yeah? It's that frustration that just gets through, and it's and, and I'm not the only one sharing it. So let's see what uh, producer James Wan said to be five minutes in the future. What the heck is that? Um, I don't even know what the heck that is. Chong Chi. Let's get to his quote. Where's where's the quote? Uh, yeah, why wouldn't he show up in Deadpool and Wolverine? Now that uh, Deadpool's there, like they're talking about Deadpool and Wolverine here, uh, it, it just can see how immediately in the first paragraph of their better article, it gets completely sidetracked. So uh, Screen Rant reveals that a user on Thread. Uh, so what did did Simu Liu uh, respond to that? And he said, I promise it's happening. Well, it, it still remains to be seen. And I'm not somebody who's going to pull up the Marvel timeline and speculate. There's going to be a bunch of people that do that. But just as a casual like movie fan talking about movie news, it, it, it's a head scratcher, right? Uh, where is it? Why is it not here? Why is it not happening? So, uh, my friend in the live chat says, hey, hey, how's it going? We're just here talking some movie news headlines today uh, because that's my bad. This is what I like to do. And I got to get my voice back up into uh, <laughs> into shape. I was off for a couple of weeks because I had a bit of a bit of a cough. I was able to do some watch logs and then that was about it. My voice was tapped out after that. So we got to build it back up and give me some strength. What do you guys think about Shang-Chi 2? Uh, do you want to see it sooner rather than later? I, I, I can't even, like, I don't know when. I, I, I just, I don't know when. And why isn't he showing up in other scenes, like other post credit stuff? driving it towards like they're obviously still going with Kong with Kang dynasty. So why, why is it not driving towards that? Hi. Yeah. Uh, all right. What's next? Marvel layoffs. Marvel is leaving, laying off employees. That's not good. Um, so yeah, it's not all sunshine and roses, right? The move comes after CEO Bob Iger said the company will reduce output, particularly at Marvel. So this goes back to the Shang-Chi thing. Where is it happening? Uh, guys, we have to recognize the brass tacks here. Iron Man. Uh, Thor. Well, Thor's head is run. He's still, he's still going. Um, Captain America. Those are the, are the big three that draw money. And we've heard that Robert Downey Jr. said that he would be open to coming back recently, right? So you throw whatever money you can at it, use alternate timelines. You don't have to bring him back from the timeline that we know, but just have him come in from like another universe to aid in the next Avengers movie. People will buy it. People will roll with it. But you got I mean, you got to make him front and center, right? I'm here in this universe yeah, oh, I was killed in this universe. Okay, but I'm going to help you guys defeat uh, all the, the, I guess, scrolls that are pretending to be like us or whatever, right? For Secret Wars or whatever, right? Kind of like a big, huge mashup. And then and, and then, and then, I think Marvel will be done. You, you got to let it sit for a, a decade or a half, decade and a half before you go back to it, right? But anyway. And I don't know what the heck's going on with that Blade movie. That, it's just, I, yeah. Um, and, and my anticipation, I thought that I would be excited once they announced Fantastic Four cast. I like the cast, but it's kind of like, we knew that months ago, months ago. Why didn't you announce it once all of us online pundits and fans were you know, drumming it up, talking about it? Because when they announced it, it was kind of like, Oh yeah, by the way, you guys were right about the cast kind of thing. That's what it felt like, right? It's kind of like uh, you get a Christmas toy for like Snake Mountain when you're a kid, right? Snake Mountain from like He-Man has a very certain shape. So if, it, if, if it's wrapped up in that gift uh, wrap and it's like, oh, well, you can almost like see the snake coming out and it's like, that's Snake Mountain, is it? No, it's not. And your parents are like, no, it's not. It's Snake Mountain, is it? 
Parents are like, no, it's not. So you open it up on Christmas Day, it's Snake Mountain. That's sort of what happened with the Fantastic Four. They, they, we knew that that was going to be the cast for a while, and it's like, so? You, your announcement is lackluster. It, 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 has, it has no wind in its sails. So it's kind of like, announce somebody really cool who's playing Dr. Doom is the only way that you'll get me back into excitement for uh, Fantastic Four. But anyway, 15 employees doesn't seem like much, right? Uh, including junior level employees in production and development. Okay, so now, now there's the front line, right? Junior level employees, production and development. Guys, I, I just don't get this, this project. Um, they, they still want to try to make movies the old fashioned way, but they're still also in the same token, like, you know, hiring on a director and then getting that director's vision, letting the director help develop the script. Like that's the old fashioned way, but they also are part of a big machine where as soon as you hire on somebody like that, then Feige will come in and say, okay, here are the mandates that we can and cannot do with this. Right. And I've said this about the Star Wars universe forever. For I've been preaching this. They just need to come in with a big, huge writer room. Write all of these movies out. Write them all out. Because the directors that come in, yeah, they can add in their little touches and, 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 and uh, you know, feels like it feels like a Raimi movie. It feels like um, a Scott Derrickson movie kind of thing, right? It, but you're going to have the roadmap all laid out kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and Feige's just, I don't know, if he's kept it up here in his head for too long or something like that. And it's just, it, it's it's fizzled. The, the MCU's have fizzled. And we need to have something uh, to bring us back. Anyway, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm preaching here. So, uh, yeah, so we've reduced output, particularly at Marvel. When you fix or when you address these issues with in movies, you do three things, Iger said. You get aggressive at making sure the films you're making can even be uh, can be even better. Sometimes you kill projects you don't believe in. And of course you put new things in the pipeline that you don't believe in that you have much more confidence in. And we're doing all of that. Hmm. Huh. 15 employees doesn't seem like much, but guys, if you're, especially depending on where they are in that pipeline, in that machine of driving, of pushing out movies, can have a big it could have an impact and i and i i'm somebody who thinks that shang chi is going to be one of those ones that is it, it's done uh we're, we're done with that kind of stuff we're done with ant-man and man crashed and burned we're done with uh i i don't think echo is ever going to come like there'll be side characters guys uh the marvels crashed and burned uh we're done with those we don't we're not going to get a captain marvel two or three or whatever which sucks because actually I like the Marvels. <laughs> so it, it's a mixed bag. And the MCU is in just kind of like a state of so much flux right now. Everybody's kind of frustrated. You get the point. Let's move on. Jurassic. No. Yeah. Jurassic World 4. Let's get into this. Jurassic World Eyes Wicked star Jonathan Bailey for the lead. The actors in early talks to join Scarlett Johansson who is my, uh, of course, uh, queen. Uh, I don't know a thing about Jonathan Bailey. Um, he's going to be in that Wicked film with Ariana Grande coming out this year. So I'm look okay, cool. And that's basically will be the first time that I get exposed to his, uh, his work, I think. And if he's been in other stuff, he's been like minor characters. Uh, I don't recognize his face. James, that doesn't help anything. What? Well, I'm sorry. Um, crashing. Bridgerton. I didn't watch Bridgerton. Final Fantasy fourteen and Walker. Uh, Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan series. Huh. War Master. Wait a minute. Is Jack... Uh, sorry, is Jack Ryan... Is that Amazon Prime? Uh... Byfer says in live chat, Shang-Chi made no money in China. The sequel has no chance without China's support. Yeah, what, what, what was the box office for that? But anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't recognize him, but he's got a lot of uh, credits under his uh, belt. A lot of TV stuff, it looks like. So he's a well-established actor. He just hasn't punched through 
loud enough yet to get, well, even diehard movie fans like me to recognize them. But uh, I am looking forward to this Jurassic World thing that apparently is going to be shooting pretty soon. Because they want it out, like, next year, right? Is that, is that what I heard? Yeah, they want it for, like, 2025. Gareth Edwards, right? Which is cool for me. Gareth Edwards directing Scarlett Johansson, Jonathan Bailey. Um, I just thought, that's quick turnaround if they're shooting it this year, which should be starting to shoot soon, you would think. But See, now this is the kind of thing that you want, right? This is the situation where it's the ideal situation where they've they've worked the script for Jurassic World 4, they got it on the director and the cast now, and it's going. And it's not the Shang-Chi situation where we're kind of like, what's, what's happening? Where is it going? Maybe it's on us as movie fans, just the way that the MCU set us up to anticipate sequel trilogies, right? Um, let's address that uh, concern there from uh, Pfeiffer I, uh, about the box office for Shang-Chi. Because I it was profitable, I, I, I think. 432. Let's just say it had a ridiculous budget of 200 million. So it, it, it just basically... It, it, it barely broke even, right? But yeah, the international, the international numbers were just not there. It made a higher domestic gross than internationally. So those are concerns. And as I said, if you can make it for fifty to a hundred million dollars, then do it. But once you want to blow it up to become like this big blockbuster thing, not every comic book movie has to be a big blockbuster to be good. Like, that's not the thing that happens, uh, that needs to have, uh, it's not one of the metrics. Um, because Unbreakable was a fantastic comic book movie. And it wasn't that expensive. 150 to 200. So yeah, with uh, theater percentages, marketing and stuff, it, it just barely probably crossed the line. And a lot of it had to do with that third act, for me at least. I, I, I know I'm probably in the minority with that. I actually really liked Aquafina in it. I did. All right. Let's move on. Jurassic World, as I said, comes out next year. So that's cool casting. Jonathan Bailey. Let's move on to Uncharted 2. Uncharted 2 return breaks a surprising streak that's seven years long. What? Uh, Mark Wahlberg is returning for Sully. Yeah, we knew that. Uh, and the video game sequel will break a surprising seven-year counting streak for him. What? What are you talking about? Uh, it'll be his first sequel since 2017, Daddy's Home 2. And Transformers failed to impress. Well, he was also in two Transformers movies, wasn't he? Cade Yeager. <laughs> oh, mercy. But he, he still had was. I know it's... He still has one of the better moments in all the Transformers movies. Uh, and this is where I... I kind of like Michael Bay's sense of humor when he he's on the back of the truck or something and he falls down and he rolls out and it, and the vehicle hits like that Bud Light truck. He lands and picks one up and takes it and drinks it. See, no, that's funny. That that worked for me. <sighs> Devastator's big balls hitting together didn't does not work for me. But anyway, uh, whatever. Uh, Uncharted 2 aims to end mixed reception from critics Wahlberg's sequel. And apparently he is going to grow a tash. I didn't hate the first Uncharted. I had fun with it. It was a touch on the long side. Uh, it took some unexpected turns with who the villains were. Uh, but once you start to think about it too much <laughs> and realize that there's no way that, that this cavern could exist there. There's, we're, we're defying the laws of physics here. Once you start thinking about it, then, it, yeah, it, it, it comes a little undone. But I had fun with it. Uh, did I ever plan to revisit it? No. Do I want to own it? No. But it was fun. It was fun while I was in the theater. Um, Uncharted 2. Uh, man. 
<laughs> that, that's the headline. <laughs> Is that it? Uh, yeah, so he's going to have a cash fine. Um, how did Uncharted 2 do at the box office? Let's just take a look. Uncharted. Or oh, sorry. 2022. 407 million. That's not bad. As long as the budget wasn't outrageous, which it probably was. I, uh, guys, uh, again, the studios need to stop. Yeah, we all agree that they need to start making smaller films again, right? Uh, get back to the kind of like the cheeky, let the actors do their things and not so much what's going on in the background kind of thing, right? Anyway, yeah, Uncharted 2. Um, I don't think it's slated for 2025. Yeah, it's not even it's not even on the IMDb yet. So well, we know that is that they're working on it. It's probably they had to figure out what's going on with Tom Holland's uh, schedule. Because because there's reports that they're going to start filming the uh, Spider Man four this year, which would tie up uh, Tom Holland. Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare keeps the film of, of UK and Canadian cinemas. What? No. I want to see this movie. I'm a I'm a fan of Henry Cavill, and I'm a I'm recently a big fan of uh, of Alan Richson. What do you what's what's going on here? Uh, Guy Ritchie's The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare is ready to light a fuse in theaters throughout the U.S. and on April nineteenth. However. The ensemble ensemble action romp. So it's supposed to come out this week, guys. According to Yahoo, the movie won't screen in UK cinemas. Instead, the film will stream on Prime Videos. Ah! Hey guys! Ooh! Oh! 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 Hey! If it's going to be on uh, Prime, we are going to be doing a full live watch along for this movie this Friday. Uh, and that's good news. Because it gets me out of having to do a full live watch along for uh, Rebel Moon 2, <laughs> which we'll talk about later in the show. But if that's true, that's true. Bring it on. Now, I'm sh they would be losing. Why would it not be playing in Canada and the UK? I mean, it's about the formation of MI6, isn't it? Uh, the British Army. Why would it not be playing? Like, again, decisions by the studios that just make you go, what are you smoking? What are you doing? It, it can't cost that much. It's got Jerry Bruckheimer producing. He's got, he's got the clout. He's got the connections to move this, to get this out there. But hey, this is maybe good news for us here on the channel Mirror Domains. Because if it's uh, going to be on Prime this Friday, then we are going to be doing a full live reaction to it. And now that bodes extremely well. Let me just pull up my Prime here and see if it's listed as upcoming. Um, this is Joe Sackick. Hey, I like Joe Sackick. He was one of my favorite players. That's he's one of the reasons why I like this Colorado Avalanche. Sorry, I got, I'm getting sidetracked here. Where are we at? Uh, Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Well, it's not being listed there, but according to this article, it's going to be, uh, it will stream on Prime Video. Okay. Guys, if it is, once I get confirmation from Amazon, then yeah, we will. We'll be watching this one Friday. Um for sure. For sure. Cuz I I like the I like the trailer. I like the premise. Uh, I like the cast Carrie Elway's there is playing what one of the bad guys. Um He sold me. Well, he sold me with Henry Cavill. I'll watch whatever he does. And uh, of course, now that he's going to be working with Alan Richson, also really thumbs up. That's cool. Sucks for the movie. It won't make as much revenue. 
But you know what? Guy Ritchie's been having trouble distributing his movies because his last movie, Operation Fortune, was supposed to come out, came out in limited release, and then it got shelved for a while, and then got re-released on. Man, I, I I don't know, man. Uh, it's just weird. I, I don't understand what's going on with Guy Ritchie's films. Uh, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Weird casualty, huh? Next. Tron Aries. An onset video reveals Jared Leto in costume in social media post. Ah, let's just take a look. Oh. So it's uh, been claimed. Whatever. Guys, we've seen set photos of him. Um, it's very much this costume. Uh, I think the few, few set photos I saw, he just takes it off. So basically, if you don't know what the premise is for Tron Aries, he plays another program. I don't know if he's going to be playing. Uh, he's not playing Tron, and he's not playing Clue, because <laughs> Clue is Jeff Bridges. Could he be playing a variation of Ram? Because Ram died in the first movie, but we never got to see him back. And you would think that with the user of Ram would still be there. I, I don't know. Or he's obviously maybe he's playing a character Aries James didn't you think about that yes I thought about that I'm just I'm offering speculation as to where this is going um nah. are you guys excited about Tron Aries is anybody excited for Tron Aries let's see if I can pull out one of those set photos yeah okay there, there's one right there open image in new tab and it's, 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 it's rough stuff. So basically he's a program that gets like sentience, the ability to think and feel for himself. And then he wants to come out into the real world. And so he does. That's what I understand what happens. Uh, kind of like the way that Olivia Wilde's character did in, uh, uh, Tron legacy, right? It's an interesting universe. It's got interesting ideas. I like the aesthetic of it. So I'm looking forward to it. On Aries. What's next? What is next? Um, Fomo says in the live chat, did you hear Keanu Reeves' voicing Shadow Guy in Sonic 3? Yeah, we'll talk about Keanu Reeves there towards the end of the show. Hey, guys, if you like this kind of stuff, join me on all my other social media because sometimes, you know, those little shorts that we publish here about, like, um, my favorite movies of March and stuff. I can post extended versions of that on TikTok and Instagram. Actually, people really like my Star Wars thing there. On It's weird. I don't get it. I publish the video, the same videos across all platforms. Uh, that Star Wars thing is really kind of, lots of people liked it on TikTok. Instagram has like five views of it where, uh, what is it? TikTok has got it listed as 900 in the, like, yeah. Let's just see what the count is here. A thousand. Oh, actually both the videos that I posted yesterday are a thousand. A lot of people like that little quick little, uh, review I did for um, Fallout. But again, I turn around and I look at it on YouTube and it's like 50 views. It's like, I, I don't get it. It's like, the, the short shelf on YouTube used to work really well and now it's kind of like, it takes a day or so for it to gain traction and then it just, ah. you know, I'm not going to complain about that. Let's move on. Ready or Not 2. Ready or Not 2 will be an absolutely effing banger. Teases Radio Silence. Radio Silence does have a movie coming out this week, guys, called Abigail. Uh, it's still Tuesday, so we'll talk about Abigail later in the week uh, as we get closer to uh, Thursday. I'm seeing Abigail Thursday at 5 p.m. So uh, I'll be looking forward to that. That's that one where she's like a... Uh, um, like a... Girl vampire and some 
people get locked in a house with her so she can eat them and toy with them and play with them and stuff. Um, Ready or Not, a lot of people were big fans of Ready or Not. They uh, thought it was the next best thing since sliced bread. Let's pull up the uh, tomato meter. Um, I, <laughs> I like that it kind of introduced me to Samara Weaving. But for me, it was kind of like, I, I've seen sort of the same premise, so I was really harsh on it. Now, maybe I need to revisit it. Maybe I do. 89% by critics, 78 by the audience. So we know that they were working on a sequel to it. And if you know anything about the first film, I guess maybe there could be some retribution from the evil <laughs> entities. Or I, I don't want to give too much away. Uh there's got to be some kind of repercussions because she breaks the balance kind of things, right? Um, yeah, I'd be out for it. It will be an absolute effing banger. But that's assuming it ever gets made. So, again, it's... Can they get the, the funds to make it? It's getting figured out, said Gillette. That's what we'll say. Ready or not to is getting figured out. What we can say is that there is a script that is absolutely a banger. And forever... And however it gets made, and whenever capacity we are helping get it made, we are so exciting that it's happening. The movie is truly the love of our creative lives in a lot of ways. Yeah. Hmm. Samara Weaving's... Well, she's kind of busy for a while, I would think. But Radio Silence may have some opportunities, because once they're done with this Abigail, I don't know what's on Radio Silence's menu. What am I doing? Samara Weaving. Pull that up. And yes, I know that she looks a little bit like Margot Robbie. That's why it was so fun in that uh, atrocious Babylon movie where I think they shared a scene together or they, they at least looked at each other. Uh, Azrael. Azrael, she was in that. So she got a lot on her plate here, guys. Borderline, Liz, Down in the Rabbit Hole, Eeny, Meeny, Bella, Little Sky, 20% Wolf. A lot of stuff. She's a busy girl. That's, so she should be. She's talented. She's got talent. Uh, and, of course, as I said, she's a, she's a stunning, stunning beauty. Um, ready or not, too. What do you think? You got the script? Just can't seem to secure the funds just yet. Radio Silence just hasn't built up enough clout yet to say, okay, this is the movie we want to do, and then have some producer come on and say, of course, you can do, go do that. And it's not, that's like, as a, when I say that very few people are James Cameron, Christopher Nolan, uh, where it's like, I'm making this movie. Okay, here's the money. <laughs> uh, who else is like that? Scorsese sort of is, but he's losing it. Uh, not even uh, Spielberg's like that. Uh, no, I, st I still think Spielberg's a bit like that. But you know who's not like that is uh, Francis Ford Coppola. And that, that kind of bums me out because uh, I did pull an article about Coppola. In fact, let's, let's talk about that now while, I, while we're doing this. Because uh, he's got that uh, big uh, Megalopolis movie that he self-financed. And, it, and it's articles like this that get me a little bit bummed out, right? Francis Ford Coppola is $120 million. Like Nobody wanted to give him the money to make it. It's Francis Ford Coppola, the guy who made Godfather. What are you talking about? Nobody wants to give him money to make a movie? Aye. But yeah, $120 million sci-fi movie struggle is part of a much bigger problem in Hollywood, or ho bigger Hollywood problem. Um... Yeah, so the script apparently, and from what I understand, he showed it to people to try to get uh, distribution. And it's such an abstract piece that people were coming out saying that it's, well, it's going to be hard to market. Which is, guys, I have no problems going to see abstract pieces. I have no problem going to art house films. But for this price tag, or, or, I guess we're just not there yet. We, like, Megalopolis, if it was made for $10 million, would easily get it. Easily get But he can't. Not for the, this. Like, the vision that he has, it better be translated to the screen. 
uh, and translated well. Not like where do you, it's Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, or Shang Chi. <laughs> it's like big uh, green screen uh, cartoon, right? Not like that. But yeah, the Megalopolis thing is a passion project for his. And uh, I, I'm, I'm like, I want to see it because he's a talented filmmaker. But uh, this article up on Screen Rant just goes in to talk about like the budgets. Hollywood has a real problem with big or mid-budget original movies. No, but yeah, because original movies, people just don't want to, like, it's hard to make a big blockbuster original. It's the IP that makes it a blockbuster, right? And then it's not always guaranteed that it's going to be a safe thing to dump a whole bunch of money into. I'm looking at you, Indiana Jones 5. <laughs> 340 plus million. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. But anyway, hey, it is what it is. All right. Now, now we're going to talk about uh, Rebel Moon. This I should have put the I didn't realize how Rebel Moon would have tied into uh, Ministry of Un Ungentlemanly Warfare as easily as it would have. <sighs> Rebel Moon 2. Zack Snyder says both directors' cuts will drop the same day cast interviews. Okay, so uh, hey, you 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 finally get uh, the uh, the director's cut of the first movie. I'm not going to watch it, uh, guys. If it was an interesting enough premise, maybe, maybe. But it was it was rough for me. If we were not doing a full live watch along for the first part of Rebel Moon, I I I would have I would have been pressing the fast forward button. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go uh, use the washroom here during this scene. Is it over yet? No, it's still going. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, because it's the slow motion. The slow-mo killed it. Okay. But it is coming out this Friday, Rebel Moon Part 2. There are fans out there. Uh, and as I said, guys, if it's true about uh, Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare coming out the same day, we are watching that movie first. Guy Ritchie gets front of the line, front and center. Zack Snyder, I'm sorry. It, don't, it does kind of hurt me to say that. Because I liked your, your cut of Justice League was so much better. And I love Sofia Batella. But the universe does nothing for me. Sitting here and watching me shake my head at it is probably more entertaining than, <laughs> than what we're probably going to end up feeling at the end of Scargiver. <sighs> uh, uh, what what is the runtime for Scargiver? Let's let's just take a look at that because if it's over two and a half hours, I I, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I'm going to subject myself to that kind of brutal punishment. Okay, so it's two hours. It's two hours. Okay. Uh, with credits, it's probably like an hour and 55 minutes. But I, there's, there's, I'm not on board with any of the characters. I want to like Korra. I just don't. I, I just don't care. And Charlie Hunnam, I'd rather, like, his character betrays them, right? So it's kind of like, I mean, do I want to see him get his comeuppance? Ray Fisher. Ah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Are you guys excited for this? I'm sorry if I'm poo-pooing all over your uh, excitement for it, but I, I just, I got... Uh, uh, Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, guys. Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. And the... Uh, Critics were harsh on it, 21%. <laughs> 57 by the audience. Audience was just over halfway liking it. Because it blurred, it crossed the line of paying homage to things just to blatantly ripping off things. <laughs> Maybe I need to do a video about that. Maybe. We'll see. All right, next. Keanu Reeves joined Sonic 3 as Shadow, yes. Oh, well, you talked about that earlier. 
Uh, this broke like yesterday or on Sunday night. Uh, Keanu Reeves, what a mensch, right? True class act. Um, voice wise, fine. And if you've heard him do some voice acting in the past, he can he can do some modulation. He can change around uh, his, the way that he sounds for sure. Uh, he's not going to be that kind of uh, California surfer accent all the time kind of thing, right? <laughs> Although they'll probably throw that in. Anyway, whatever. Um, I never saw Sonic 2. Uh, I liked the first one. I just, when I, uh, my niece is getting too old for these films. <laughs> so it's kind of like, yeah, I, fine, cool. Kudos for everybody who likes it. Um, I And I never played the Sonic games. So it's kind of like a uh, video game feature will uh, release December 20th. Huh? How about that? All right. Where are we at? 43 minutes in. Okay. Uh, Pomo says, uh, did you see the last Hunger Games movie? Yes, I did. Um, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I really like that. I thought that was actually pretty good. It uh, really surprised me of uh how good it was because it looked like it was going to be trying just to rehash things it felt like two movies in one it did but uh and it was long but tom blind there he did a good job and uh so did rachel ziegler actually i thought it would be kind of like hammy over the top kind of stuff but she uh she delivered what else did it introduce? Oh, yeah, and Hunter Schaefer. And, okay, so I did see Hunter Schaefer before in something. I was thinking that Cuckoo was going to be the first thing that I saw Hunter Schaefer in. But it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah, she was good in it. Um, and so was uh, Peter Dinklage. He always brings it. Talking about class acts. Yeah. Rachel Ziegler. It was a it was a tragedy, right? Because uh, he, President Snow, or the younger Snow, starts off as somebody that you kind of like you you want to root for, but then you kind of like you see that that seed is planted in him to become that ruthless kind of person. I, I like I just like being in that universe. I did. Did you see Wish? It's a Disney movie. No, I did not see Wish. Uh, if we had oodles and oodles of time, guys, we would be still doing the uh, Grumpy Man Reacts kind of stuff. It's just, I I, I work uh, during the week and um, the times that I do get off, I, I I don't play as much guitar as I'd like to do. I don't draw as much as I'd like to draw. I don't write, I don't write the scripts that I want to do as much as I want to do because I just, I just, well, there's just not enough time in the day. All right. Uh, Viper says, I liked Wish Animation music, but the story was very bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, I heard that the reception for Wish was not that good. Um, the reception on the tomato meter was what, like 48%? Yeah. 81 by the uh, audience. All right. So we got a couple of uh, hit or miss headlines here, guys. Is that, that's all that's on the slate here, right? So let's just burn through them. If it's a hit, we'll talk about it. If it's a miss, we'll move on. Um, Chris Hemsworth failed to convince Kevin Costner to cast him in a new movie. Costner cast himself instead. Well, that doesn't sound like... Uh, <laughs> why would you be like thinking about casting Hemsworth, a younger person, for the movie? But then you turn around and cast your older self instead. Um, if I'm still young enough to play it, I'll play it, Costner said. Well, we've heard from reports on Yellowstone that Costner's got somewhat of a big head. Because he wants to protect the work that he's doing. And I think he's kind of earned it because of his projects that he's put out with Dances with Wolves. Uh, I know a lot of people didn't like the uh, the postman, 
it had some decent stuff in there. Uh, I liked Waterworld too. Uh, he, I think he pretty much saved that from becoming a complete train wreck. But anyway, uh, Hemsworth in a in a western. Yes, I want to see it. And we're going to see Hemsworth next in Furiosa, which I'm really looking forward to. Hemsworth has got the chops, but basically, uh, the quote that kind of rubbed me the wrong way was, uh, I think he said that you got to sit and wait your turn or something like that. Uh, added, there are horses involved and the character is a horse wrangler, which drew him to the part, uh, my wife read the script and loves horses. So Hemsworth said that he wanted to do it. Um, it's a love story, but it's a long, but as long as I'm still young enough to play it, I'll play it. Chris will have to wait his turn. Yeah, it's, it's that tone. Now, we don't have context to that. But it's just kind of like, Costner, what are you doing? How old is Costner? Has he got to be early 70s? Okay, 69. But everybody raves about his performances in uh, Yellowstone, so not to see. Next, original Blair Witch Team reacts to not being involved in the new movie. It's bittersweet. Yeah, we uh, we saw headlines about this when it originally broke. Uh, the people that came up with the idea and stuff. We know that we're getting a uh, was it announced at CinemaCon last? Week? No, it was even before CinemaCon. We knew as horror fans, we knew that there was going to be a new Blair Witch movie coming. Uh. Yeah, and I like Book of Shadows. I did. It worked for me. Um, it worked for me because when I saw it in the theater, I was like, "This is not the Blair Witch. This is not the Blair Witch." And then once you realize that, oh, they're they're going for the folly and you. That's what uh, Blair Witch Two was all about. And it was beyond Dieu, it was, it, it's a where a group of people, a group consensus have a group delusion kind of thing, right? So when uh, when I was watching it in the theater and they're like about to kill one of the girls, it's like, wait a minute, she, why are you going to do that? She she appears crazy, but guys, if you're out on the outside looking in, yeah, it, it, it worked for me. I like Blair Witch too, so I give it a pass. But um, the, that reboot sort of thing that came out like in 2017, that one didn't really work for me. Sooner or later, you, you can't dance around not showing the witch. You're going to have to at some point. I don't know. Maybe it's just better left alone. We'll have to see. But they wanted to be involved with the new one. They were not allowed to be, so they haven't talked to any of us. Uh, hey, that's that's what happens when the IP is happens. We'll have to see. Yeah. The original Blair Witch. Oh, no, this is the Blair Witch from uh, 2016. Yeah, 38% by critics, 31 by the audience. So not a lot of people liked it. Uh, I think Matt Donato liked it for some but he, he gives a pass to a lot of weird stuff. Uh, the original was received by critics, not so much by the audience. I, and I saw Blair Witch in the theater. It made me uh, motion. <laughs> uh, yeah, motion sick. Next, Chopping Mall from 1986 Classic is getting a novelization. I want to re I want to reboot Chopping Mall. I think there's a, there's an opportunity there to capitalize on that kind of cheesy schlocky horror. Uh, I, I did like a reaction to it, like uh, <laughs> one of my favorite scenes a while ago. Oh my god, look at that! Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall. Um, come on. Wow. Yeah, it's killer robots. Teens break into the mall, rub body parts together, and then the robots... How could um, you not like this move? <laughs> the robots kill them. I, I would add a variation that they're urban explorers this time around, uh, going into an abandoned mall. And since the uh, company that runs the security for the mall doesn't want to pay humans to do it, they get, like, drones and stuff to do it. And the drones are killers. So there you go. That would be my variation on it. 
Could you still in, add in the the sleazy? How uh, could you not pack it? Sleaziness. <laughs> of course I would. Kind of like women I mean, scantily clad on. running around getting <laughs> shot. What's not to like? Getting shot in the butt, that kind of thing. I think it could happen. I pulled that anyway. Original 1999, 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles explains how Star Wars influenced the movie. What? I still, the, the 1990 TMNT for me is still the best Ninja Turtles movie out there. Come on. Um, Elias Cotius, Cotius as uh, Casey Jones. Thumbs up. Uh, inspiration. Turtles smart and thrilling. You know, and uh, from what I hear, that we, we're going to get a new live-action Turtles movie, but it's going to be that Ronin storyline where Raphael tries to get vengeance for his, like, the rest of the Turtles die. So I don't know how they're going to market and sell that one. Because as soon as you say Turtles, then stupid parents will be like, we're going to drop off our kids to this movie because it's Ninja Turtles. No, it's not. <laughs> well, it is, but it is, it's meant for an older age. I don't know how that's going to work. The thing is, is that they make them too silly. And the the 90s version, they took it, yeah, it was, it's, just, it's an audacious idea, but it was serious in tone and the way that they talked to each other. It wasn't, and the way that they interacted with their environment, right? And that, and that opening shot of Shredder coming in uh, with the big long shadow is still one of my favorite villain entries of all time. Next, Hannah Waddingham tells photographer, "Don't be a D." After red carpet comment, you would never say that to men. Who? Somebody got in her grill, huh? That sucks. I I, I think Hannah's awesome. So somebody disrespected her, huh? What did they say? Long story short, Hannah was be was being her gorgeous self, and then the photographer made some comment about her leg. We couldn't quite make out what, and well, the video speaks for itself. Oh my god! Oh my god! Well, what did she say? Did they say? Uh, Show a little bit of your leg. Oh my god! Yeah, he said he never say that to a man. Okay, so he wanted her to flash a little bit of the leg, I guess. I yeah, don't respect disrespect her. She's gorgeous. She's awesome. Good actress too, right? Uh, great talent. Yeah. What are you doing? Just take pictures of her. Good for her to stand, uh, stick up for herself, though. That's uh, that's admirable. Uh, something that's not admirable is Courtney Love saying that Taylor Swift is not important. This is Beyonce's cowboy Carter. You know what? <laughs> I don't know why this is a story. Uh, who cares what the heck Courtney Love thinks? Uh, she's only famous because she married Kurt Cobain. And the only reason why she has money is because of Kurt Cobain. Uh, I started to read some of her criticisms and then she was like <sighs> starting to rip them as artists and I was like I got I got no time for you Courtney I'm I'm offended that I even have to use your name but it got me an excuse to talk about Taylor Swift her album comes out this Friday so on top of doing a, possibly a full live watch along for on gentlemanly warfare we are also going to be doing a listening party for the new album. Now, it drops like Thursday night at midnight. Of course, I'll be in bed. <laughs> so we'll do it maybe in sometime Friday during the day, like everybody else will be doing. Last story of the day. Representation Matters. Probst, Jeff Probst from Survivor, made a mandate to be more inclusive, and it's led to significant change. Well, it's not, guys, it's not this that matters, does it? It's about 
getting people who've got it up here to make the game interesting to watch. That's like that last season that we watched. It 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 it, it was the culmination of everything, pretty much that. Survivor needs to evolve out of. Uh, it, it's not. It's not the color of somebody's skin. It's not their 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 orientation. Well, I understand the intent. It's a, it's an honest intent. But find interesting people first. This will go down as one of the most most positive and significant changes in Survivor. Uh, yeah. But I don't see uh, North American Indian, uh, Native American. I guess you guys can't call me that, right? <laughs> Only a, yeah. We prefer First Nation. Anyway, here in Canada, we do anyway. Um, then sign me up. The thing is, is that if they sign me up, they would probably want me to have the long hair and talk in a very stoic voice. And it's like, no, <laughs> I'm not going to. And the, the, it just goes to echo that there's still casual racism out there. And while their efforts are just, your overcompensation only highlights that. That's all I'll say on it. I'll be back on the Survivor train when once we get to like a, an all-star season. Which apparently we're not going to get for another two or three seasons. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. That's all for me today, guys. Uh, let's go over to the Twitterverse and we'll round things up and see if I missed any big headlines. And we're going to bring this thing under an hour. That's good. The poster for Hacks Season 3. Never watched Hacks. Uh, ooh, that's an interesting photo. The Harkonnens. The Beast. The Baron. And Fave. Okay, here you can see that it looks a little bit like he's wearing the skull cap, right? Uh, yeah, Austin Butler. This is just makeup. He put, he put on a skull cap. That it ties in back here on the on the nape of his neck. A little too wrinkly there. Two part two was so awesome though. And actually, the weakest part was the Baron for me. The Baron just wasn't as grotesque as I wanted him to be. The first ten minutes of Doom Part Two is online. Yeah, I saw this story too. Kit Connor and Rachel Ziegler are going to be on Broadway's version of Romeo and Juliet for music from Jack Antonoff, who works with Taylor Swift all the time. Fine. Uh, I, I, I don't mind Romeo and Juliet, even though a lot of the story does go into side tangents with Mercutio and uh, who else was the other one? But yeah, it, it, it takes a little while to get to Romeo Romeo's actual story. Because uh, Shakespeare spent a lot of time building up the families and like world building around them, right? I don't know. It's not one of my favorites, but it's uh, there. Romeo, thou art a villain. Yeah, come on. Who doesn't like that? Timothy Chalamet is Bob Dylan. Well, he looks like Timothy Chalamet. He doesn't look like Bob Dylan, but whatever. Of course, the Masters happened over the weekend. Scotty Scheffler won. Congrats. I, I had no opportunities to watch the Masters. I came home. Was it three? Warrior. Yeah, no, I was just like uh, uh, I was tapped out. First look at Jonathan Abbott in It Doesn't Matter. The film revolves around redemptive relationship between a lost man from Staten Island. 
Of course, Christopher Abbott's going to be our wolf man. Immaculate is now available on VOD. Really, that's a quick turnaround. So is Doom Part 2. Really? Happy 22nd birthday to Sadie Sink. Oh, happy birthday. She's going to be a big talent, guys. In the years to come, uh, I, 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 it's hard for me to say if uh, Millie Bobby Brown's got talent. And the camera loves her, but I, I, I don't know. She's not working in roles that are allowing Millie to flex those acting muscles. Like, I, I have fun with Enola Holmes. I like Damsel, but neither of those projects allowed her to go to some places and show us what she can do. Like, we've seen that with what Eleven is in Stranger Things. Like, it, it, it goes to those tones. So Millie can't do it, but Sadie has shown that in Stranger Things as well. And then, of course, then what she did in The Whale, everybody hated her, which is the point. You were supposed to not like her, but she also has got depth. Um, so for me, it's a hard call, and I would probably even still maybe give a little bit of an edge to Sadie Sink in uh, acting ability. But anyway, happy birthday. Small compliment there for you. Uh, not that you watch the show, but whatever. <laughs> Riley Kyo attends Under the Bridge. Did you see the movie The Whale? Uh, yes, I did, uh, Pomo. I did. Uh, I liked it. I liked it. I know it wasn't for everybody, but I liked it. Uh, Pfeiffer says, Millie Bobby Brown is easy talker for bullies and trolls. And, and I, I still champion her. Um, I mean, that's why we watched movies like Damsel. And Enola Holmes, even though Enola Holmes got blocked. Oi! I don't know. I still follow, and uh, I'll watch what she does. They're both good talents. Kelly Kyo, Lily Gladstone under the bridge. And there's the man himself. Henry Cavill is, ex is expecting his first child. Well, kudos. Congrats. Jonathan Bailey. And talks to Starro about Jurassic World with my goddess Scarlett Johansson. And let's end it there. Let's end it there, guys. All right. So, um, uh, I didn't cause I I didn't hear the, heard the story and wasn't for me. Oh, the whale. Yeah. Um, about addiction. Um, I guess also depression, right? Uh. Yeah, Aronofsky, uh, he didn't pull any punches with the whale. So if you wanted like things like a little bit softer on tones in, in its messaging, the whale was not it. It was very, very, uh, very harsh. But that's not harsh. That's pure, pure beauty right there. And let's end it there for today, guys. So uh, that's the movie news show. But later on this afternoon, we will be, uh, whoops. Oh, I didn't put in. Uh, we will be starting Reacher Season 2. This afternoon, full live watch-alongs. And I think we're going to do it the same way that we did the Fallout series. We'll watch like two episodes back-to-back, -back and we'll just go through it day by day. All right? So come join us for that. Hit that thumbs-up button, and I'll see you next time right here on Mirror Domains. Thank you for joining me, Bifer and Pomo. Awesome. Awesome.